So recently for a client, I had to make this transparent rotating globe of the Earth. And I found quite a neat way of putting this composition together. So I want to show you today how I did that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press the button for the internet. The button for the internet. We're going to go to this website called NASA Visible Earth. And we're going to select here under blue marble. Now it's what we want to download is we want to download something called the equirectangular projection which is what all of these images are. Now you might be familiar with the Mercator projection, which is the standard image of a globe. On the Mercator projection, continents and nations get stretched in all dimensions as they go towards the poles to account for the unwrapping of the globe. Whereas on an equirectangular projection, things only get stretched on the x-axis as you go towards the poles, which is why you get this quite warped shape. But this is needed in order for the computer to easily wrap it back into a globe when later we apply our sphere effect. So we're going to pick one that we like the imagery of. Uh, they're all largely the same, but this one is good down here. Now one thing I might recommend doing is if you've got a slower PC, you can download them in very high file sizes. Now I would recommend doing that as it will allow you to zoom into the globe uh, more closely before we lose detail. But it's what you can do is you can download both a high res and a low res version. First edit on the low res and then swap the high res out for rendering. So we see here that we've got a low res version there. And then we also have a high res here, which is 2160 frames. So let's come over and let's download the both of them. So now we've downloaded that, we're going to go and grab our file and we're going to open it up in Photoshop. Now, if you don't happen to have Photoshop, you can also use the key light effect within After Effects to do what we're about to do here. And then once this is in Photoshop, we're going to come over here to the left hand panel and we're going to select the Magic Eraser tool. And then it is literally just as simple as clicking in the ocean and the computer will delete everything but the land. It's also worth deleting these larger bodies of water over here. We're then going to come File and we're just going to go Quick Export as PNG and we're going to save this down. We'll call it Globe PNG. There we go. So we're going to shut down Photoshop and we're going to come over here into After Effects and we're going to drop in that PNG which we created earlier. Now I'm just going to, going to have to scale this down quite a lot because it was that much larger file size. And before we go any further, there is a shortcut method to this, which is to use After Effects inbuilt CC Sphere effect. But I found that my technique gives much more customization options and you can change the color and the transparency of the land around the back of the globe, which allows you to get a much better looking end result. So to do it my way, we're going to go back over to the internet quickly and we're going to go and we're going to download this free plugin called VC Orb. It's linked over here on Video Copilot. Now this is a really powerful plugin. You may well find yourself using it after this tutorial as well. So it's well worth downloading and adding to your arsenal. So now we have that downloaded. We have our PNG here. So, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply a fill effect to it. And then I'm going to make the color sort of like a dark navy, I reckon. That looks good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pre-compose this. And it's that equirectangular projection. So I'm going to call this equirectangular front. So the next steps, I'm going to create a new shape layer like this. And then I'm going to apply that effect we've got called VC Orb. And I'm going to name this VC Orb Front. There we go. And then let's make these the same color just to make that a bit easier to tell. Then within the VC Orb effect, I'm going to come down to Maps. I'm going to select diffuse layer and then I'm going to pick layer two, the equirectangular front. And then I'm also going to turn off the back layer. So here's our globe. And finally, I'm going to set the radius to 450. If it's a 4K comp, you might need slightly bigger. And just quickly, you want to make sure that that fill effect is applied inside the pre comp. Next is what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to create a new null object and we're going to call this rotation controller. We're going to add two effects to this. Cool. We're then going to add two of this effects to it called slider control. A slider control is basically something which is a slider which does nothing, but you can pair anything you like to it to control things from there. So we're going to call this first slider control X axis. 
And then we're going to add another one. And we're going to call this Y axis. We're then going to twirl down into the effect on the VC orb layer. We're going to take the rotation X controller um, and we're going to pick whip it to the X axis slider control. So rotation X to X slider and rotation Y to Y slider. So we now have this nice globe here that we can rotate from this controller layer. But when stuff orbits behind the back of the globe, you'll see that we can't actually see the land going around the other side. So how are we going to change this? Well, it's what we basically need is we need a reverse of the land that is going to sit behind this layer and rotate in the opposite direction to give the appearance of the land moving behind the globe. So to achieve this is what we're going to do first is we're going to come over to the project panel and we're going to take this equirectangular front thing we're going to duplicate it and we're going to rename it to back. It's important to do this within the project panel rather than down here within the comp itself because if you just duplicate the comp there then a change to one will affect the other because they are effectively the same comp. And then we're going to just drop this echo rectangular back into the project. We're now going to open this up and you'll see that we have the uh, map comp of the earth here. We're going to hit scale we're going to unlink it so the x-axis doesn't affect the y-axis. And we're just going to put in a quick negative symbol so that it flips it this way. And we're going to go back into our main comp now. We'll then repeat the steps we made earlier of creating a new shape layer, applying the VC orb effect, setting the radius to 450, going down to maps, and then selecting the equilibrium rectangular back turning off the equilibrium rectangular back layer itself and then we're going to name this to VC orb back. There we go. We're then going to make sure that this equilibrium rectangular back is sat underneath the VC orb front layers. There we go. As this rotates behind the globe I'd like it to also have a slightly different colour to it so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to make it a slightly lighter blue. You could also lower the opacity if you wanted as well. So how are we going to get this back layer here to basically rotate the same but opposite to the front layer? Well, we're going to do this with some more of those slider controls with some expressions applied to them. So we're going to go up to the rotation controller and we're going to add a few more slider controls. One we're going to call x-axis reversed and the other, you guessed it, we're going to call y-axis reversed reversed. We are then going to twirl down into the effect of the VC orb back. We're going to get their X and Y rotation and we're going to make sure that the X rotation on the VC orb back is paired to the X rotation reversed and the Y rotation is paired to the Y rotation reversed. We're then going to come in here onto the rotation controller. Now is what we're going to do is first of all we're going to pick whip the x-axis reversed onto the x-axis controller and that is going to basically auto populate for us this expression here. So that basically just says affect the x-axis which uh, element of it the slider it just links them together. So it's what we're going to do is we're going to come to the beginning and we're just going to enter a negative symbol. This is going to basically make sure that everything that that does is inverted and we're also going to do the same for the Y as well. Y to Y. Edit expression. Add that negative there. Right, so that's almost there. You can see that as uh, the 61 there is negative 61 here. And as I rotate it, they go in opposite directions. But it still doesn't look quite right. The consonants aren't lined up properly. So what we're going to do next, and we only have to do this for the y-axis rotation, not the x-axis. We're going to come into that expression here, y-axis, edit expression, and we're just going to do plus 200 at the end. So now we have that transparent globe with the front and the back lined up properly. But there's one last thing which I want to show you how to do. Let's say we want something like, for instance, a flight line going from the UK to America. Is what we'd do to achieve that is we'd go into the equilateral rectangular front thing, we'd duplicate that, we'll then draw our flight line. So let's have it going from there 
to there. Make it a nice orange. Up the stroke. There we go. I duplicated this so when I pre-compose it, it's the right size. So we're going to um, pre-compose that and let's call it overlay. And then as I was saying earlier, if you just copy this directly, it's going to be linked. So we're going to make use of that here. So we'll copy this overlay and we'll come to the Eclair rectangular back. We'll simply paste on that pre-comp and we'll make sure that it is inverted the same as the map comp below. Oh, and then also let's go inside and turn off the globe PNG inside it. So we're left with just the layer. Now, if I come back into the main composition, you'll see that I should have that orange line going across the globe. There it is. Now, if I rotate this so it goes behind the globe, I should also see it around the other side as well. So that's how you make a transparent globe using the VC Orb effect in After Effects. I'm doing some client work, so if you've got any projects which you want to discuss with me, then there's a Google form down in the description. And if you've got any questions at all, then please do just let me know. Thanks.